All right, we're here with Republican Von Ward running for the Republican nomination in Idaho's 1st District. Hey, Dustin. Mr. Ward, you have advocated for closing the borders. What does that actually mean? Does that mean a fence? Does that mean troops? Does that mean more border patrol agents? What does that mean? Dustin, that's a great, that's a great question because I think it's a combination of many things. It is about a fence, but, you know, in uh, Yuma, for example, they do a fence to one day walk away. If you've ever been to Yuma, it is hot down there, and what the idea is that you would perish more than one day walk away from, from, uh, from an urban environment. But they have sensors on the fence. They have overhead surveillance with drones. They have uh, roving patrols. And then they have people up on the border. I mean, these are the things which you look at would be a, a multi-tiered approach to defending our border. It's not about just making a fence all the way across. I've never advocated building a 3,000-mile stretch of fence. To me, that would be not only wasteful, but it would be ridiculous to try and do something like that. But what you can do is using these multi-tiered assets that we have that are usually coming derived from the military. And I've used, matter of fact, I've used all these assets before. And that's what you do is you build like a multi-tiered approach to defending the border. And it's also more economical. You know, building a great big fence, that's not going to do a very good job. But using a multi-tiered approach with technology, and a lot of this, this technology is off the shelf, it's cheap, and it's more, de uh, it's technology to deal with, you know, the... Uh, uh, trying to cut through a fence or, or doing things like that, and they've done a great job in Yuma. Matter of fact, such a good job that there, when I was down there, they, they had a, I had a brief from um, the Border Patrol. They were flying airplanes, uh, the Mexicans were, and crash landing them in just over the border uh, in, into these uh, fields to just smuggle drugs. So they're doing such a good job there uh, of defending the border that they're trying to bring the drugs in now through these rickety aircraft jumping across the border. That tells me, hey, you're actually being effective on the border. Right. Now, um, many on the board tonight, the, the editorial board, said that you flip-flopped on the 17th Amendment issue. Did you and do you or do you not support the uh, repeal of the 17th Amendment, Again, the, the common this, issue? It is, it is a great issue. I feel the passion behind what they, the fundamental change 100 years ago of our, of our Constitution with taking away the ability of states to elect the senators. Are we now 100 years going to change that? I don't think so. If the people become upset about it and it becomes an issue, a cause, maybe we'll change it. But what's the fundamental aspect of the 17th that we could change that strikes at the heart of getting government back or getting the people back in control and stopping the government? And to me, it is about term limits. Because you force that turnover, you're not going to have a Ted Kennedy parking himself for I don't know how many years, or Bobby Bird, who's been there forever, it seems. It forces turnover, and with that change is new, it's new ideas, and, and I, I think that's a way to give not only power back to the states, but power back to the people. So yeah, I fundamentally want to shift and change the 17th, and we do that, do the term limit going forward. Who knows what would come in the discussion later down the road, but let's first try and do, the first step to me is amending it and putting the term limit in. All right, tonight, Mr. Labrador on the board, question your credibility and authenticity due to your campaign misuse and lack of a record. How do you prove that candidate Ward would do what he says he will do in Congress? You know, Dustin, that's a good question. You know, I have proven myself time and again on the battlefield. You know, that's my voting record. I, don't, I have not cast a bunch of votes. I'm not a politician. I've not spent time in the legislature. But you know what? I think it's about time we have some sort of change on this. It's about time that we start saying, you know what? Electing 535 people again and again and again, or pulling from legislatures and saying, well, this is the path. He's been a, a legislator, so now we'll make him a congressman. That, to me, doesn't make any sense. You know, Ralph said one of his great heroes is Ronald Reagan. Do you know what Ronald Reagan's first elected office was? I'm not sure. Governor of California, after that president. You know, so what I'm saying is that just because I didn't follow Raul's path to being a politician first doesn't mean that I don't have a good background. I've got 15 years of leadership experience in the Marine Corps, the CIA. I am a fourth generation Idaho. I was born and raised in the state, went to school here, went to Boise State. I remember when Boise State turf was blue, or when it was green. My point is that I understand our Idaho values. I want to take my, if Idahoans will elect me, I want to take those values and go back to Congress and fight for those things. Okay. A new poll released today finds you ahead of Mr. Labrador by 18 points. What does that poll tell you about this race with two weeks to go? You know, Dustin, I don't look at polls. I don't look at polling data. All I do is, is I always play like I'm seven points down and you keep driving forward. Because I think any time, I once heard this great saying, once you think you've got it licked, you're licked. And, and I think that is a, a paramount part of what a campaign should be about, is never take anything for granted, keep pushing hard, and I am fighting seven days a week, every day of the week, pushing out the message, trying to talk with people, listening to Idahoans. Those are the things that are indicative of a campaign we've been running for 14 months. It's about talking to people. You know, and now that we have a lot of support now, 14 months later, we have a, a lot of people who are saying, we're gonna help you out that are known, like Sarah Palin or, or Governor Phil Batt, and, 
these people weren't on 14 months ago. It was just local Idahoans. It was a grassroots effort that built over time. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of what's happened over the past 14 months. Okay. Two more questions. I'll let you go. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, many believe that the education system in this country is failing us and putting us behind other countries by failing to provide a highly skilled and highly trained workforce. If elected, what would Congressman Moore do to improve education in the United States? Education is one of the greatest things we do to ensure the longevity of our country. You know, it's by educating our children properly that ensures this country exists with future leaders that are growing up. You know, I have two kids right now. I want them to be future leaders. But what is important for me is education is a state's rights issue. And, and for me, the Department of Education, $59.7 billion this year alone was spent in, in the FY 2010 budget for the Department of Education. And another $96 billion was given from stimulus over to the Department of Education. Again, the Department of Education to me is superfluous to what we already do here in the state. Every state in the nation, superintendent of schools, superintendent of school districts, school boards that are elected, we, we, we through our elected, the people that are elected locally and our, our parents, the PTOs, those are the groups that drive educating our kids and that's where it should be. Not back in Congress, but locally. And I want to fight to make sure, push down local control. No Child Left Behind, which is a Bush initiative. You talk to all the teachers out there, the people that talk about it, they don't like it. I, I don't think it was a very good program, but it took away, it was a federal mandate from Congress telling us how to educate our kids in Idaho. It's the wrong way to go. It should be here locally, not nationally. Okay. Now, IdahoReporter.com, we want to give you a fair shake. Earlier this week, Brad Iverson Long, our other reporter, dropped a story saying that you had um, interned for uh, two Democrats during your college career and then uh, Governor Timothy Kane over Virginia. Um, what's the story there? Two Democrats? One Democrat. I heard one. That's good I, I apologize. One. I apologize. You know, when I was a, was uh, this is 22 years ago, Yeah. and I'm trying to remember the exact way it all went down. <clears throat> I was in a political science class, mm -hmm. and our professor said, go learn about the legislature. Go learn the process. And we had to write a paper. I think it was we had to write a paper or something like that. Yeah. So me and a buddy went around the legislature trying to listen in and walk around. And I think it was um, Jim. Matheson. Was it Matheson? No, no Jim. Uh, I can't remember. His last name is... His, his uncle went to jail, and I can't remember his last name. But anyway, the point is, we went and, and to, get, to write our paper, he said, well, you can do these things for us. Mm -hmm. It was like an, a weekend we did something for him. I don't remember where it was. Right. That hardly qualified to say that I interned for a Democrat, which right. I didn't. Right. And it hardly qualified to say that I'm a Democrat. I'm trying to write a paper as a college kid. <laughs> All I care about is getting that paper written and then going out and hanging with my buddies on the weekend. Having some pizza, yeah. So... This is back in college, right. and I did go to Boise State. I'm proud of that, mm -hmm. and I'm proud of everything I've done as an Idahoan, and I think that's important. Uh, when it comes to Tim Kaine, over the past week, the DNC, the Democrat National Committee, the DCCC, the Democrat Congressional Committee, it's the, the House right. Democrats in the, in, the, in the House of Representatives, and the Idaho Democrat Party have all come against me. Do you suppose they're trying to help me or hurt me, and why me? What are they trying to do? The DNC is coming after me. Tim Kaine's ridiculous assertion that I have signed up to be a volunteer. Where's your proof? Let mm -hmm. me see it. And, and it is garbage that, you know, I have, I one time had Raul Labrador on my list of people that were support, you know, part of my lists of everything you do on a campaign is generating lists of right. people to try and drive the vote out. I've got all sorts of people on my list. But does that mean that I support, that all those people support me? I'm trying to get them there, but it doesn't mean anything. And, and I think that what's important here is that Democrats are very concerned about what we're doing. They're concerned about the support. They're concerned about the momentum. How is it that I'm closing in on Walt Minnick on fundraising? How is it that I've organized 19 counties across this district? That's what's important. What Raul's doing, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm out campaigning every single day. And we've organized every single county. We have hundreds of people that are volunteering, walking and knocking on doors, making phone calls to reach out to voters. That's what's important here, not something 22 years ago that I allegedly did, you know, some work for a Democrat. Who cares? I wrote a paper off of it. It had nothing to do with ideology. Right. But I think that's the important part of this. Friday, we just want to give you a fair shake. <laughs> hey, thanks for the fair shake, man.